powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Six local taxpayers are now suing to stop the city of Billings from imposing franchise fees on water, sewer, and garbage. This lawsuit claims the city's franchise fees amount to an illegal sales tax to raise revenue for the city. Now the fees amount to 4 and 5 percent of what is charged for those services. According to the court brief, Montana law prohibits municipalities from imposing a tax on the sale of goods and services. In 2017, those fees in the city of Billings brought in $2.3 million to the city's general fund. In a news release, the residents point out back in 2003, the Montana Supreme Court struck down a similar franchise fee that the city attempted to collect. These illegal sales taxes aren't being used for a special fund for water and sewer services. They're being put into the general fund so that they can pay for other things. Whether they're called franchise fees or not doesn't matter. If it looks like a tax and gets yanked out of your pocket like a tax, then under state law, it's a tax. This new lawsuit also asked the court to certify the complaint as a class action lawsuit for 30,000 residents. City Attorney Brent Brooks tells us his office and outside litigation attorneys are looking over the lawsuit. The city of Colstrip will receive four and a half million dollars to help prepare for life after the shutdown of the Colstrip power plant. Now the money comes from Spokane-based Avista Corporation. That's one of six owners of the Colstrip plants. At a hearing in Helena today, the State Public Service Commission heard details on Avista's proposed sale to Canadian power firm Hydro One Limited. As part of the sale, Avista has agreed to pay $4.5 million to the city of Colstrip. Avista CEO Scott Morris told the commission he doesn't see the newer Colstrip plants 3 and 4 shutting down anytime soon, but says Avista wants to help Colstrip prepare for eventual life after the power plants. And Colstrip Mayor John Williams says the city negotiated part of the deal directly with Avista and now will undertake a public process to decide how to spend the money. So while this four and a half million dollars is a good start, uh, on our part, I would, I would suggest that at the time of closure, whenever that is in some future time, that there'll be uh, a very thoughtful process that we would have gone through as six owners and multiple states in order to make sure that the right thing is done for Colstrip. We are a small town of 2,300 people and we're all connected within the community of uh, coal energy. But this is an opportunity for us to move forward into the future, to better prepare our community for whatever future lies before us. The five-member Public Service Commission must sign off on the proposed sale of Avista before it's complete. You might recall last year Puget Sound Energy, the majority owner of the coal strip plants, agreed to set aside $10 million to help the coal strip community prepare for its uncertain future. Authorities on the lookout for two suspects who escaped after a high-speed chase between Livingston and Billings overnight. Now, the suspects on a motorcycle are wanted for burglary. They led Yellowstone County deputies and Montana Highway Patrol troopers to an alley in Billings between North 24th Street and North 25th Street. Now that's where the suspects ditched their motorcycle and fled on foot. Billings police responded to the scene to help set up a perimeter around the commercial yard, but officers soon discovered the suspects had escaped. The names of two children killed in a crash near Lame Deer this past Monday night have been released. The Bighorn County Coroner identifies the victims as 12-year-old Lola Pickett and 8-year-old Mona Eagle Star. The girls were killed when the SUV they were riding in hit a culvert and rolled off of U.S. Highway 212. The Highway Patrol reports that three of the vehicle's six passengers were ejected. One person thrown from the SUV was run over by another vehicle when it drove through the crash site. Alcohol is suspected as a factor in the crash. The MHP says, in fact, none of the occupants of the SUV were wearing seat belts. An illness that leaves otherwise healthy people bedridden is rare but prevalent here in our community. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a condition that can even make the simplest of tasks impossible. Q2's Asia Gore is on special assignment tonight to show us how one Bozeman woman deals with a disorder that even her own doctors don't know much about. I do digital art on my computer of my Bengal cats and I superimpose it. 
Susan Henderson's passion is art. She's created art and taught it most of her life. All my photographs are those mountains right there. But one day, as she instructed a class, Henderson drew a blank. And I would just forget what I was saying. And these are young kids, and they would just look at me. That was around 1995, right before she received the diagnosis that changed her life forever, chronic fatigue syndrome. The thing about chronic fatigue syndrome is it kind of came on out of the blue. Dr. Janice Fordham says CFS, a rare, poorly understood condition, leaves patients feeling exhausted both physically and mentally every minute of every day. About three quarters of my life is in bed resting. Henderson says a trip to the grocery store, even a long conversation, can leave her bedridden. It's a reality that's hard to bear. I have to give myself permission to stop and, and get in bed and rest. The exhaustion, which is typically accompanied by sore throat and irritability, is not the only frustrating part. People don't understand. It's experiential. Henderson says her own family has suggested the illness is all in her head. I had one person say, you know, if you just were spiritual enough and just turned it over, you know, you'd get better. And her condition can't be backed up with blood work. When you come to the doctor's office, you want to get a diagnosis that has data to back it up. And this is one of those illnesses where we don't have a lot of information and we're still learning a lot about. I don't look sick. Um, and, I, and I hide it. My thing is I'm letting go of this urgent need to make other people understand. Fortunately, some people do understand. Henderson has a support network she connects with by phone. Hi, Risa. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. There's no known cause or cure and no one-size-fits-all treatment and in some medical communities even no support. Well, I think the problem is just that there's not been a scientific study that says this links this problem and this is treatment. The illness is a mystery, one that leaves CFS patients searching for clues. How do I live with that so that I don't have to get so dark, so hopeless? I'm tears. Her diagnosis is, in many ways, a puzzle with missing pieces. But through her connections with CFS patients, oh, I'm doing okay. Henderson finds a different kind of peace. And Asia joining us now. Asia, you took a walk up a hill, it looked like there. How was this interview on her? Well, I spoke with her this morning, and that whole conversation lasted about 45 minutes between us. She said she was thoroughly exhausted, and I even noticed that toward the end of our conversation that she was losing steam. Uh, she spent mm. several hours resting after that and did some meditation to recover. She told me that she wants other patients out there to know that there are support groups across the state so they don't have to feel alone. All, All right. right. Thanks, Asia. Thank Sad you. Sad situation. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, it's a bear of a task. The Montana Department of Transportation crews are plowing through it. We'll have the latest for you on clearing the bear tooth. And in sports, divisional track and field championships today in Laurel, Scott shows us who's fastest and furthest. And coming up in weather, it's been an active night in the weather center. A lot of big thunderstorms moving through. We'll bring you up to speed in just a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.